Hey there, movie fans. Welcome to a brand new episode of FYC. We have two more episodes to go, including this one, until the big day, March 12th, the 95th Academy Awards. Man, I cannot believe we are that close. Joining me as always, the amazing Perry Nemiroff and the mighty Jeff Snyder. We're going to be covering the two screenplay categories, as well as visual effects and cinematography, and we're going to end it with animated feature overall Perry, what do you think of the screenplay categories how strong do you think that they are i think they're really strong and i'll tell i'll tell you the two movies that i think are the front runners in the categories are also the ones that i would pick to win so i'm gonna have very enthusiastic number ones right now okay jeff how about you everything's on the table with these screenplay races scott you know movies that really aren't up for any other awards could win uh, in these categories so we'll see Okay, well, let's start with the best adapted screenplay. Yeah, we're going to do what we did for the last few weeks here. We're going we're gonna to rank the screenplays in terms of, like, our favorite. Like, what we think is the, is the worst, you know, worst being a poor choice of words, to the best. And we're going to say, obviously, who we think is going to win. So, Perry, what's number five on your list for adapted screenplay? You always have to come to me first in the categories that I'm going to get shit for my bottom pick. <laughs> like I feel like this was planned on purpose. My bottom in this category, my personal bottom, is Top Gun Maverick. I love that movie. I think there are so many stellar elements of it. I don't think the screenplay is the strongest part of it. So it is at the bottom of my personal list. But I think it's got a better chance at winning the award than one other film in this category. So... It's number four in my predicted to win list. All right, Jeff. What about you? Where is Top Gun Maverick on your ranking? Number one. Of course. This crackling dialogue. A great roster of young pilots. Love what they did with it. Didn't even need a villain and a country to be specified. Who cares? Uh, do I, I think it's going to win, though? No, I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to win. I think I, I think I have it like number three in terms of potential winning. I have Top Gun Maverick at number one on my personal list as well. I mean, no surprise. Uh, I think that the more I've seen this movie, the more I realize that the, the dialogue and the, it, it actually is great. Uh, just like with little nuances, uh, uh, I think that that uh, uh, screenwriter Chris McQuarrie, who has been working with Tom Cruise now for many years, really brought to the fore like like he once all the actors were cast, once all the other pilots were cast. Macquarie went through and he rewrote the screenplay to tailor the dialogue to the actors, which I thought was a nice touch. And I think the screenplay is better than a lot of people give it credit for. It's my number one on my favorite list. It's my number two on will it possibly win. I kind of wish it was my number one, but I don't think that's going to happen. All right. So Perry, what is number four on your list? So number four on my personal list is living. I, and I think it just with this movie comes down to like a matter of taste or personal preference at this point. I think the remaining four screenplays are pretty exceptional in my book, but it's just that I would much prefer to watch the other ones again and again and again over living. As for its chances to win, it is at the bottom. I think in the case of living in terms of every category that it's nominated in, it felt likely to get those nominations, but in order to have any chance to win, we needed to see some sort of like serious spark after the nominations were announced. Something that, you know, would put it on the map and make us think like maybe it's a dark horse to win here or there, but that just hasn't happened at all. So I am kind of not considering it for a win here or anywhere for that matter. All right, Jeff, where is living on your list? Never saw the movie. It's still number three on my list because I can't stand two of these screenplays. Uh, oh, I think it is. Oh, you're going to start with me on one. I know it. I, I can feel it. <laughs> most likely to win. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really have a chance. What can I say? Uh, I have living at number five on my list and also my uh, my personal favorite list. Also on the expected to win list, it's number five, not because I think it's a bad movie or a bad screenplay. I just think that the other four are stronger, including one of them uh, that Jeff, uh, I, I know is not going to like, but you know, whatever. All right. So, all right, Perry, what's number three on your list? My number three personally is all quiet on the Western front. I, I love, I love everything about that movie. What a, what a riveting piece. 
As for its chances to win, I have it a little higher. I do think it's the the second most likely movie to win this award. We've talked about this when we're addressing other categories, but it's it's almost like, I mean, not really the opposite of living, but whereas where I said with living, where it needed to like pick up at just the right time and seems to have fallen off, All Quiet on the Western Front has done the exact opposite, where all of a sudden at a certain point, it just like took off and it's still going right now. So if anything has a chance to upset my number one, I think it's All Quiet on the Western Front. All right, Jeff, where is All Quiet on your list? It's number two on my list, but I do have All Quiet on the Western Front pulling off the surprise victory for adapted screenplay. I don't like it. Don't like it. <laughs> I agree with Jeff on both points. Uh, All Quiet on the Western Front is number two on my personal list. I think that movie is just a magnificent achievement. And I think, uh, you know, it actually, you know what? I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to keep it at number two on my expected to win list as well because i keep going back and forth and i keep coming back to the movie that we were talking in early episodes of fyc is what was going to win and you know what i still think that movie is there's going no to win. question that play. that movie is a more written movie and just wait just wait jeff <laughs> just wait okay you'll have all the time in the world to talk about this uh but uh okay perry what's your number two my personal number two is one of my favorite movies of 2022. I can't wait to fight Jeff on this right now. It's Glass Onion. I think that's just like an exquisitely penned script, just like the first Knives Out movie. It's just so abundantly clear that Ryan Johnson really knows what he's doing when he's writing a murder mystery. Talk about writing in a pitch perfect manner for the particular actors he cast. Also, just the way the mystery aligns and how every time you watch the movie, you could find other details that line up perfectly. Perfectly. I absolutely adore that movie. I adore the screenplay. I wish it had a better chance of winning, but really on my list, the only two that have any chance of getting the statue are the top two and Glass Onion in terms of chances to winning is my number three. All right, Jeff, where is Glass Onion and Knives Out story on your list? It's going to be interesting. <laughs> well, it really, um, you know, it is really something when Ryan Johnson delivers a great, uh, you know, murder mystery screenplay. And that's why I love Poker Face. <laughs> <laughs> great show this is a bad screenplay oh, much, nice. like, much like his screenplay for glass uh, for, for knives out these aren't good movies i can't believe that he is everyone fooled and this is definitely below women talking this is number five on my list this movie deserves nothing wow well uh, i'm i'm somewhere in between jeff and perry on glass signing it because i definitely liked it a whole lot more then Jeff, I don't think I put it quite on the pedestal that Perry does. I think it's a solid film. I think it's it's number four on my personal list and number four uh, in terms of likely to win. I think Ryan Johnson is a great writer. I think he's a great director. And I agree with Jeff about Poker Face. Poker Face is streaming now on, what is it, Peacock? Peacock. Yeah, P Poker Face is excellent. Okay. If, you, if you want your Ryan Johnson fix, then absolutely subscribe to Peacock if you don't already have it. Uh, I, I just think that there's a lot of competition here in adapted screenplay, which is why uh, Glass Onion doesn't have as much of a shot as I would like it to. But I agree with Perry that that with repeated viewings, uh, Glass Onion reaps its rewards because there's a lot to pick up when you see it again and again, just like with the first Knives Out. So uh, uh, kudos to Ryan Johnson there. All right, Perry, what's number one? I think we can all guess what that is. My number one on both forms of this list is women talking and you know, if I'm, if I'm going back to the idea of why it should win and why it will win, why, why it should win is because this is an exceptionally well-written piece. I also think it was obviously a, a very well-directed piece where you don't feel the director's hand on the camera and it just feels very natural. But this movie is just such an effective adaptation. And in turn, I don't really love my argument for why I think it will win, but I, I do think it's the truth of the matter is that this movie got snubbed in pretty much every single category that I was hoping it was going to get a nomination in. And I, I think the the directing snub for Sarah, Sarah Polly hurt the most, but this could get her an Academy Award. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the mentality of some out there is, well, like it got it didn't get what it deserved everywhere. Else. Like I need to I, I don't want to say throw it a bone, but like 
give it a better chance here, especially because I think it's number it's second uh, greatest competition, all quiet on the Western front is going to win other awards. So I think this is women talking's one and only chance to win. I personally think it deserves and needs to win. And I'm wondering if that kind of mentality is going to play a factor here. Uh, Jeff, where is women talking on your list? I mean, I have it. It's, it's my fourth favorite or whatever, but I have it at number two. I, this is a race between all quiet and women talking. And I don't want to use the phrase throw it a bone, but it's like, you know, do they want to take care of that movie somehow? And, and Sarah Polly more specifically and have her on that stage giving what I'm sure will be a great speech. Um, or is there just, you know, are there voters who are just going to reflexively not vote for it uh, and find something else to go with, or, you know, with all quiet on the Western front, given how much support that has in the Academy, is that just going to be like a sort of blind check, check mark? That's what I sort of suspect. Um, but I, I leave open the possibility that women talking could certainly win. Okay. So this is going to be an interesting conversation, or at least it's going to be an interesting category, the night of the Oscars, because I think up until the BAFTAs and the Oscar nominations, it was sort of like, well, uh, you know, women talking, it's, 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 it's going to win Best Adapted Screenplay, but then because of its strong showing at the BAFTAs and because it's nine nominations at the Academy Awards, I think that the, uh, the dynamic has shifted. I'm still going with uh, uh, Women Talking to win Best Adapted Screenplay. It's number three on my personal list. I do like the film a lot. Uh, I just, look, I love Top Gun Maverick more. What can I say? Um But in terms of what's going to win, I'm still going with women talking. But I think if there's going to be a quote unquote upset here, it will be with all quiet on the Western front taking the top prize. So uh, but I think for now, I'm just, you know, still going with uh, women talking and we'll see how that changes when we do our final predictions next time on FYC. Now let's do best original screenplay. Uh, Jeff, let's start with you here. What's number five on your list? Oh, boy. Number five on my list here is Tar. Yeah. I I mean, uh, Tar, uh, a masterwork to some, super well-directed. I I wouldn't be shocked if Todd Field even, like, pulled off a surprise win uh, for Best Director. But as a screenplay, it left me a little cold, and um, I don't really think it has a shot to win. Uh, Perry, where is Tar on your list? Tar is my number four four and it's my personal number four again based on personal preference when i think about you know maybe what what touched me most what i'm I'm most eager to rewatch. and in terms of its chances to i do have it higher up i have it number three in terms of chances to win but i think this category is going to come down to the one and two and then that's it just like in adapted I have uh, Tar at number three on my personal list and my projected to win list. This is another film that I've seen a few times now. The more I see it, the more I like it. Uh, I think the dialogue is amazing. And I just think that the, 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 the sort of surreal and cerebral structure of the film uh, starts with the screenplay. And I think that this is a masterpiece movie, but in terms of winning, it's number three on my list. I think, I think, you know, this is Todd Field's third feature film. And I think the third time was really the charm for him. It's his best movie. All right, Jeff, uh, what is number four on your list? Triangle of sadness, Scott. Good movie. Uh, yeah. I really liked it. Although that second act can be challenging. Yeah, <laughs> sure can. Aww. Everybody's vomiting and everything. Uh, you know, yeah, Ruben Oslin is a great writer. I think that the Academy obviously really respects him, but I, I don't think that this is his year. Uh, Perry, where is Triangle Sadness on your list? Personal list, it's my number three. I was just like intoxicated, mesmerized by everything that happened in that movie, even though I watched the vomit sequence through my fingers because I don't like vomit. And in terms of chances to win, it's it's my number five. This is another one where I could apply the living argument to. It's just, you know, it got all these nominations and it it doesn't feel like it used that as a as a springboard to really push itself into the conversation to be a potential winner in a lot of categories, which, you know, it, it surprises me a little bit. But I think this one's the least likely to win in this category. I have Trial of Sadness at number four on my personal favorite list. I have it at number five on my expected to win. I think this is an amazing film. I think, you know, just like with adapted screenplay, I think all the screenplays and original screenplay are really, really, really strong to say it's like number five on my list. Doesn't mean I don't like it. (laughs) I just think it's like my fifth, uh, 
you know, expected to win. I think the structure of the screenplay, the way it starts off, like the, the models, and then it turns into the same with the ship during the, the storm and the vomiting and the stuff with the, uh, it's, it is a hard second act, Jeff, no question about it. But that third act on the island, uh, when, uh, you know, DeLeon like takes over the, uh, the paradigm shift, it's, it's a brilliant movie. Uh, Ruben Oslin directed a, wrote and directed a brilliant film. It's number five on my projected to win. Jeff, what's your number three? Uh, mm-hmm. my, my number three is everything everywhere all at once um although i think that it still has a very good chance to, to win it obviously original when original is in the title of the award there's nothing more original this year than everything everywhere all at once exactly it's just a matter of you know because they're winning so many other awards is the academy going to feel inclined to sort of spread the love which which i suspect will be the case i don't have the daniels this is more of a directorial you know, force. Uh, so I don't have them winning the screenplay award. I have them at number three. All right, uh, Perry, where is everything everywhere on your list? One in one. I, I do think, I know someone said this last week or the week before that an everything everywhere sweep is going to be kind of boring. But I mean, Jeff just said it right there. When you look at the title of the category and you hear the word original, this is the definition of a highly original, unique screenplay. Not that let's say Banshees doesn't have its own unique qualities, but I've been saying this all along with everything everywhere all at once. I've never seen anything like this. And now that I have seen it, my brain still can't compute how they wrote such an inventive, creative script and actually made all the complexities work. It's just like, I I think this one is like not just one of the best screenplays of this year, but probably one of my favorite screenplays of all time. Wow. Okay. That's a very, very bold statement. Uh, I will say everything everywhere is number one on my list. I projected to win. It's also my number one uh, on, in terms of personal favorites. You know, I, I've said this before. I keep going back and forth uh, between Top Gun and everything everywhere as my number one movie of the year. I guess it sort of just sort of depends on what mood I'm in or what time of the day it is. It's so hard to go back and forth between these movies. But I guess that's, you know, in terms of what we do, Perry and Jeff, I think that's a really good problem to have, uh, to be torn between two films that are just so friggin' amazing for completely different reasons. But like you both said, original is what everything everywhere is all about, uh, the structure of it. And of course, the momentum of this film, seeing what, what has happened with this movie, with the Directors Guild and the SAG Awards and the Producers Guild, and uh, most likely what's going to happen this weekend at the Spirit Awards, this is everything everywhere's wave to ride. And uh, it is, I think, going to win uh, uh, best original screenplay. I will say that up until this big sweep, I thought like Banshees of Any Sharon was the one to do it because uh, Mark McDonough is so beloved by the Academy, having been nominated for original screenplay before. And uh, uh, I just think that it's possible that that Banshees might not win anything, which is which is a shame. Uh, but it could happen. We'll have to see. All right. So that, uh, leaves us with Jeff. Uh, what's your number two? Yeah. My two is the Fablements. Yeah. Um, which I think is a great screenplay and one that people just didn't understand. I mean, when, when Michelle Williams says, well, you know, I, I bought a monkey cause I needed a laugh. People are like, uh, this is like a line out of Dr. Doolittle or something. But no, it's actually a super heartbreaking line. Um, yeah, yeah. I just wish more people understood this movie. They definitely didn't. All right, Perry, where is The Fablements on your list? I guess I understood it. The Fablements is my personal number two, but in terms of chances to win, it's my number four. And this is another one where it looked like it was in such good shape at the beginning of the season, especially with the audience award win and all this other love it looked to be getting. And it just like it just seems to be fizzling out, like fizzling out to like the utmost extent. I can't believe how little I'm considering The Fablements for any kind of win now. You know, I got to say, so Fablemans I have at my number five personal, my number four expected to win. And not, like, again, not number five because I don't like it. It's just number five out of five amazing screenplays. Uh, but I will say, and I, and I, just being completely honest, if Spielberg's name wasn't on this film, I don't know if the Fablemans will be getting as much award season attention as it's gotten. Because it's his story, because he, you know he wrote it with he wrote the screenplay. His first credit 
as a screenplay writer since AI artificial intelligence back in 2001. And again, it's his personal story. I think that that's really fueled a lot of the award season chatter. But I will say too that Fablemans is kind of a cautionary tale of what happens when a movie speeds out of the gate like it did at the Toronto Film Festival with that win for the People's Choice, the top prize. Because Perry, you're right, it has kind of fizzled out. And it's a shame to see. I feel bad for it, you know. Um, but I have it at my number four, expected to win. Uh, and again, it's another film like Banshees that could walk away with nothing. Uh, it's really interesting. All right, Jeff, what's number one on your list? Uh, that would be Banshees. I do think that Banshees is going to win this award. Um, I just think it's a writer's movie and people love Martin McDonough and his rich dialogue. And I mean, you've got four actors, you know, nominated this year from that movie. That's because you know, the characters are great. Um, yeah, I just I, I suspect that Banshees is going to be rewarded here. Uh, Perry, where is Banshees on your list? And is it possible, is Jeff Wright, <laughs> is it possible that Banshees could pull off the win here? Banshees is my personal five. I feel like everyone saw that coming. I respect the fact that so many people love it. And I, I see why it's a great screenplay and why it deserved this nomination. It didn't hit me quite like a lot of other people out there. So personally, it's at the bottom of my list. I have it as number two right now in terms of chances to win. And even though, you know, for the sake of the game and making predictions, I'm still predicting everything everywhere to really win the award. I know that Banshees, if anything, is, is like right right behind with a, a very, very realistic yeah. chance of taking the Oscar Agreed. and, and running away with it. So uh, I agree 100% Perry. I think Banshees is very, very, very close behind everything everywhere. And I agree with Jeff that uh, Banshees is a writer's film for sure. Again, you know, the Academy does like Mark McDonald a lot. It's my number two on my favorite list. My number two projected to win. My question for everyone watching and listening to FYC is, do you think that Banshees of any Sharon could pull off the upset and win. No, well, not that that's really an upset. Yeah. <laughs> do you think that, yeah, it's not an upset, but do you think that Banshees could pull the win over everything everywhere? Comment below and hit us up on Twitter and let us know what you think if uh, Banshees could actually win here. All right. So that's uh, best original screenplay. We're going to move on to uh, visual, oh, sorry, cinematography. And rather than rank, all the cinematographers here. We're just going to have a broader discussion on this, if that's okay. Uh, but the nominees for best cinematography are all quiet on the Western front, Bardo, Elvis, empire of light and tar. So Perry Nemiroff, take it away. So right off the bat, I'm going to eliminate the ones that are not going to win this award. So I think automatically we can cut off empire of light, tar, and Bardo. Not that those are not beautifully shot films, but at this point in the game, two films have emerged as, as the clearer front runners. I do think one is more likely to win than the other, but I do think Elvis is still in the game here. I am okay. keeping an eye on that one. Okay, so but... what's, your, what's your take? My take is that it's going to all quiet on the Western front. I'm, I'm really am. I'm very curious because that one has always felt like a lock in my mind for international feature. But again, yep. with, with the, with the stronger campaign as of late and all the additional support that movie's getting, I'm start, like, I don't think it's going to be enough to propel it to the top of the list in best picture, but where I see it benefiting from all this is in a lot of the crafts categories. And I think this might be one of them. Okay, Jeff, what is your take uh, on the uh, rundown here with the best uh, cinematography? I agree with Perry. I think this is uh, going to all quiet on the Western front. And I thought James Friend did a great job. He just delivered a really visceral, you know, war experience. The Academy loves war movies in this category. Um, Elvis, you know, was really good. Uh, and, I, you know, obviously I liked how it was shot. The, the performances were really dynamic. But um, it just seems like, all quiet on the Western front has the momentum heading into this race. So, so I, I, well, Perry, I agree with the three movies that you wrote off at the top. Uh, I do feel like when I, when it came to just kind of writing off tar, I, I wrote that off in pencil because I do think that there is a very slim chance 
uh, that Tar could win cinematography. And I say that because I really, really love that movie. Uh, but when it comes to like the two front runners here for cinematography, I do agree all quiet on, on the Western front and Elvis are the two front runners. And Jeff, I agree with you that this, the Academy loves movies that were films and, and all quiet on the Western front is in a friggin' amazing movie. It's my number three movie of the year, but it is also despite being nominated for nine Oscars and despite winning big at the Baptist, it's the only one of the best picture nominees that comes from a streaming service. All the other best picture nominees played in theaters. So because of that, and because of my love for Elvis, which has stayed strong since I saw the film over the summer, a couple of times, I actually think that Mandy Walker could win for cinematography for Elvis. I think there is a lot of support for her. Uh, Jeff and Perry, correct me if I'm wrong, but if Mandy uh, Walker wins for cinematography, won't she be the first woman to win? No, that's wrong, right? Didn't Power the Dog? No. Yeah. No, no. Power the did Dog. Did Power the Dog not win? It did not win. The only Oscar that Power the Dog oh, no, won. Rachel Morrison, no? Yeah. Um, Wait, what, Jeff? Didn't Rachel Morrison win? For Power the Dog? No, for for uh, Black Panther or something like that. No. Uh, while you're checking that out, while you're doing my my uh, research, my uh, um, you know my my fact checking. No, she was nominated for Mudbound. All right. Okay. Yeah. I, I okay. Yeah, I think they were so both just nominees. Okay. So for everyone watching and listening, make sure you correct me in the comments section below if Mandy Walker. Will not would not be the first woman to win cinematography. She might be. I, she might be the first. I think she is. I should have done more research before I did this conversation. Like because Elvis did exceptionally well at the box office over the summer, made almost three hundred million dollars worldwide. There's a lot of love for this film. Uh, I do think, and it was a movie that played in theaters. And I just think that overall, the Academy is really behind. Movies and theaters again after a streaming service won last year for Best Picture. I'm leaning towards Mandy Walker for Elvis right now. Man, right. Can I can I give you a scenario where I think what you're saying might really be possible? But I'm I'm also not super confident if sure. if if Mandy Walker wins the uh, ASC award. Yeah, I think I'd be more likely to consider that being a realistic possibility. But the difference. The difference is Claudio Miranda is in there for the, the oh, American absolutely. Society of Cinematographers. And I have a hard time imagining that award going to anybody else but him. But then again, he didn't get an Oscar nomination, which is still like one of the most baffling snubs of all. I agree, agree 100% Perry. Claudio Miranda not getting nominated for an Oscar for cinematography was like a big slap in the face. And a major, major, major snub. That was one of the WTF snubs uh, during the Oscar nominations. But he's not nominated here. So that's – I think that that does open the door for Mandy Walker to win. I think this is going to be a very interesting category to watch. Any other comments before we move on, Jeff? No. I just like how we've done three categories and none of us have – like the three of us have not agreed on, on any of them. Well, next week we're going to have to pick one – in each of the 23 categories, that's going to be a fun conversation. And uh, I, I think we're going to do that one live next week. We'll announce that soon. So let's move on to visual effects. The nominees are All Quiet, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Top Gun, Maverick. Jeff, I'm going to throw to you on this one. What are you ruling out and what's the big winner here? I think this one's kind of obvious, but maybe I am wrong. I mean, I think Avatar takes it in a landslide. I mean, I, you know, are we all forgetting how we got out of that theater in December and we were like, wow, like James Cameron has done it again. Um, I mean, I love the effects work in, in Top Gun Maverick. It is, they are very supporting effects. If you guys are interested in that, we have a great interview with Ryan Tudhope up on, on BTLnews.com. But um, yeah, I got to go with Avatar here. I just don't see how you, how you bet against them given the, the landmark revolutionary work that they did. I agree. Well, okay. Perry, what's your take? 
I'm eliminating All Quiet, Black Panther, and The Batman. I am not taking Top Gun Maverick out of the equation. And, you know, it's a it's a really interesting to, to look at Avatar versus Top Gun because I feel like the effects in something like Top Gun are the type of effects, and, and this extends to, like, much smaller things that nobody ever pays any attention to, but I am often very wowed by like real world effects that you don't even realize are effects that are there Absolutely, to fill out a yes. world. And I, I think in general, not to, not to take away from the revolutionary achievements that Avatar The Way of Water has pulled off, but I think that type of effects work needs to be recognized a little more often than it is. The reason why I'm not writing Top Gun Maverick off, even though Avatar The Way of Water is exceptional, probably one of the most mind-blowing effects-driven films I've ever seen. I even like the 3D in that movie, and that is not something I ever thought I would say. But because Top Gun Maverick is not nominated in cinematography, I'm just wondering if some people who wanted to support the visuals there might flood over here and give it a little boost and make the category a little more competitive. Okay, I just want to take Perry's conversation, cut it out of this episode of FYC and sleep with it under my pillow because I agree with you 100%, Perry. Like as we've been approaching this phase of FYC during award season, I started to really sort of change my opinion that Avatar, The Way of Water was the one to be. And by the way, Jeff, when you talk about like that feeling that we all had when we saw Avatar back in de December, I had quite the unpopular opinion on this when i said wow that was boring okay yes the visual effects were great but the visual effects did not sustain my interest in the film and after a while i'm going to quote something that george lucas said back in the early 80s during his summation of his original star wars trilogy he said a special effect without a good story is a pretty boring thing and as much as i hate to say it Avatar, as much of an achievement, it is deemed as being, and it and it is. Let's face it. Uh, I thought it was a. I thought it was boring. Sorry, unpopular opinion because you can't argue with two point two billion dollars worldwide and counting. So, but well, hey, you know, I think it's fair that you that you find it boring. But it, I mean, you still have to rate the the work itself. Like the work may have not had an emotional effect on you, but. The effects are unparalleled. No, I, I agree. I agree a hundred percent, Jeff. But I'm gonna really sort of, well, not sort of at all. I'm gonna back what Perry said a hundred percent that the best visual effects are sometimes visual effects that you just don't uh, observe while you're taking they're, them. They're invisible, and, right? They're they're invisible, and because so much of the of the uh, groundbreaking innovative filmmaking done for Top Gun Maverick uh, was done practically because of Claudio Miranda putting six cameras inside a cockpit and using up to 26 cameras at once during any given shoot. Uh, you know, and the immersion, the immersion that you feel with Top Gun Maverick, but there was, there is visual effects to supplement all of that. And I think that it blends so perfectly. And I feel like that Top Gun Maverick could pull off a win here but for the purposes of this conversation i mean i feel like it's just one of those categories where it's like oh yeah avatar and that's gonna win but maybe i'm wrong what do you think ladies and gentlemen <laughs> and everyone watching fyc do you think that avatar is a lock for best visual effects or do you think top gun maverick could pull off the upset and fly past Avatar and win Best Visual Effects. Comment below. And while you are commenting below, make sure you subscribe to Perry Nemiroff's YouTube channel. One more category to hit before we sign off. We're going to go through Best Animated Feature. The nominees are Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, Marcel, The Shell with Shoes On, Turning Red. I think this is an amazing category with an obvious front runner. Perry, what do you think? Game over. It's been game over for a long time. This award is going to Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. I think this category in particular, when I think about clear front, front runners, if that movie loses, I can't imagine anything more shocking happening at the Academy Awards. It's going to win. They agree. Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, I think Pinocchio is a lock at this point. The artistry is just undeniable. People love you know, and respect Guillermo del Toro. 
but I am uh, planning on, on putting up like an if I had a ballot thing uh, on above the line later today, I think. And if I did um, actually have my own vote, I might go with turning red. I love okay. turning red. <laughs> you know what? If I was going to go with my own vote here, I would go with Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Uh, I think that's an amazing film. I was really blown away, not just by the story of it, because it's a it's a it's a darker and deeper and more, I would say, existential story than I was expecting from a, a sequel to Puss in Boots. But the animation is just absolutely off the hook. Uh, I think Joel Crawford, who directed the film, just did a bang up job. And in any other year, this would be the front runner to win. But no, I agree with both of you and everyone else and every other award that Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio has won. Uh, Guillermo <laughs> del Toro's Pinocchio, bless you, bless you Jeff, bless you. <laughs> uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is a masterpiece in every sense of the word. It is a timeless film uh, and, and timely in many, many ways. It is a Talk about dark and 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 a movie for grownups. I mean, it really is a movie for grownups. Uh, maybe not so much for kids, but kids are still watching it anyway and loving it. So yes, yeah, so there you go. So uh, Guillermo del Toro, yeah, sure, animated feature. Pino Pinocchio all the way. And my nose is not growing, so you know I ain't lying, and neither are Perry <laughs> and Jeff. So I gotta say uh, that is brings us to the end of heavy analysis all season long on FYC. And I got to say that after five seasons, three of them covering film, one of them covering Emmys, I am so honored. And I look forward every week to talking with Perry and Jeff about FYC, about award season. I think this has been the best series of our conversations yet. And the next time on FYC, make sure you get your ballots ready because we are going to go through all 23 categories and we are going to pick one winner. None of this. Well, I think this and Jeff thinks that and Perry thinks that we are going to settle on one winner because we want to help you win your office pools. We're going to announce the live date very, very shortly on social media when we are going to record our next episode of FYC live. So make sure you join us for what is sure to be an amazing conversation. And this is what we are all about. Make sure you subscribe to Perry's channel. Big, 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 huge thanks to our sponsor above the line. My mansion is being built right now in the Bahamas. So thank you very much for, <laughs> for sponsoring us and make sure you share FYC on all your social media channels. So you can let people know, you know what, if you're going to watch any award season show, this is the one. So ladies and gentlemen, everyone watching until the next episode of FYC. FYC. See you later.